Hello, my name is Dr. Shanda Blackman from Rochester and Minnesota. And I'll be talking to you with my colleagues about how to thoughtfully bring in new technology into your operating room and into your hospital. We'll start by introducing each other. Dr. Lukatic? Hi, Jim Lukatic from the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. Shanda Blackman, Mayo Clinic. Sloan Guy, Cornell. Linda Martin, University of Virginia Thoracic Surgery. So we'll start by going around the table. I'd like to hear from everyone, what's your biggest obstacle to bringing new technology in? Dr. Lukatic, you're a champion of bringing new technology in, and you're probably the biggest force anyone has to reckon with. What are the obstacles that even you face? Well, um, one, I think you have to pick a technology that is, um, has a chance to succeed, it has to be in vogue. There has to be a reason, um, a rationale for change. Uh, and then you have to be relentless because we are a group of surgeons that tend to be traditional, tend to be conservative, do no harm. And to make a change um, is surmountable, really is. So I think you have to be, you have to have a good technology. Um, there has to be a problem, a need that has to be met, and you have to be relentless. And how do you gather administrative support? Do you do your homework before going to them, or do you wear them down, or do you... Well, ho hopefully, it, it's very difficult in the beginning. If you're new to an institution, um, they're, they're feeling you out. It's their money you're, you're really ultimately going to spend, so I think you have to uh, develop a track record with them. Once you've done that and had a few wins, if you will, uh, I think that you're expecting them to support you. They, they want to support you. They want you to win. Uh, but you better have some good ideas. You better have some good ideas in the beginning because if you get a couple of losers, uh, then you're going to have a hard time uh, garnering their support. So it's, it's very important that you get a few winners in the beginning. Right. So that's a good take-home message. Don't ask for things that you aren't going to use. And if you ask for them and you get them, make sure the utilization's high and you really thoughtfully use that. No doubt. Sloan, what about you? You did a masterful debate yesterday on bringing te technology into the operating room. Well, I think the whole thing starts with doing it for the right reasons. That we're about doing what's right for patients, helping make their lives better, give them a better outcome. And I think that's where it starts. And then you have to sell your idea within the institution. And that includes administration, as, as Jim mentioned, but it also includes your team members because there's nothing uh, worse than bringing new technology into a, an operative team, for instance, and they don't really believe in that new technology. And so you've got to do some, um, some sales work with that team. And, and of course, all good s sale jobs begin with, um, with a good message and a good reason, and then you've got to convince them. And you've got to show your team members respect and that you understand that it's important for them to want to do it. Um, because otherwise um, you'll get obstructions all along the way. So you're really, it's sort of like passing a bill through Congress, whether it be the administration, nurse, the nursing administration, your team leaders, your divisional or departmental leadership, you've kind of got to go around and get their buy-in. And to do that, you've really got to have a good product to sell to them for the right reasons. It's about the patient and the program first. So that's a great take-home message, not just bringing the technology in, not just selling it with administration and making sure that you use it, but getting all the right people on the bus, getting buy-in from all the involved people, anybody that the new technology is going to affect, making sure you adequately train them and that they understand the importance and how it's going to change the patient's life. Right. And I think you bring up the issue of training. I think that's particularly important. Um, as surgeons, we're used to thinking about ourselves traditionally, and that's the, in the new era of rapid evolution of technology, you have to think about that scrub tech, how is that going to impact him or her? What skills does that person have to have to be able to support that? What attitudes and behaviors do they have to bring into that particular procedure in order to make it successful? And you have to really be that leader to, um, to make it work for them. And because if it works for them and it works for the other team members, then these procedures um, you know, roll out well. And I also think you have to set expectations. 
that perhaps, uh, say, you're doing a new type of robotic operation for the first time in that institution, you have to set expectations. Well, this may take longer than it will after we've done 20 or 50 cases, and this is sort of what we, we expect. And another thing I think that's important is that once you do start to roll out new technology with the team, is to do what in the Army we used to call after action reviews. You do sort of a, a debrief about how it went and you, not just from you, but you get input from everyone else. And I found it particularly effective to take those debriefs, put them in the form of an email or some form of communication and then fire them out back to the team, but also to leadership that has impact on the team. That's great, that's very impactful. Linda, what about you? What are some obstacles that you faced with bringing in new technology? Well, yeah, I mean, there's there's many. Uh, and I think starting back from the beginning, we always have to keep thinking about innovating and moving things forward. Our field, uh, cardiothoracic surgery, wouldn't be where it was if we didn't have people who were willing to take risks and move forward. And um, Albert Einstein has a great quote that he says, if you always do what you always did, you'll always get what you always got. Um, so unless we're willing to change and try something new, we're going to be stuck. I think it's, it's a lot uh, different than it used to be. Um, our forefathers in the 40s and 50s and 60s, they were able to take a lot more risks and try a lot more things with less regulation. And these days we obviously have more um, obstacles to overcome, which are important and need to be there. And I would say now, um, trying something new, you can't just do something that's going to be just as good as where we are. It actually has to be better than where we are because we've got so many other considerations such as patient safety and cost and all those other issues. So uh, I agree with what you've all said about having, having not just a physician champion, but you've got to have team engagement. You have to have team feedback. You have to be willing to be uh, introspective and look at what's working, what's not working and uh, you know, track your results as you go and adjust what you're doing as you go or again, you're gonna fail and you're not gonna have institutional support. So one of the things that we've done is create a video and it is 20 different stations. It's all the new technology that we brought in. How to set up for a POEM procedure. How to set up for a robotic case. And we videotape each of those new technologies sort of like an in-service. So if one day, your normal scrub nurse is sick and someone's got a cover, that morning they can come in and they can watch the video and they might have a quick update on what your expectations are. How do you put the balloon on the EBIS uh, scope? Or how do you do this or that technology so that they feel the confidence that they're ready? It's labor intensive, but ultimately it saves time. Do you think that's helpful or? Well, I do, but I think that realistically, the way my OR runs, it's last minute. They may not know they're gonna be in there, they may not have the opportunity to review that case ahead of time. So I think you as a surgeon, as a leader, you gotta be ready to get in the trenches. You gotta be roll up your sleeves and take that stapler. When they're struggling, you have to know how and to load it. it right. you, you have to know how to load the suture, how to deload it, how to troubleshoot the robot. I mean, you really have to know how to de-dock when there's an emergency because the team may fall apart. So I think, you know, yeah, we're, we're the captain of the ship, but you may be also right down in the trenches. So I think to, to really be that leader, to be that captain, you have to know every job. You have to be able to absolutely take the instrument from the nurse and show them how to do it because they, at least in my institution, they're not gonna be necessarily, every one of them, prepared to run it smoothly. So I think we have to be prepared. I, I think this idea of instructional videos about expectations that are modular, I think that's fantastic. Because if you look at team dynamics in the operating room, uh, most studies have shown where friction arises is with um, expectations that are not either known or accurate, or sort of the paradigm at which a person is looking at the case. So you might have an expectation, Jim, that that stapler will be ready for you, but they don't, they have a different expectation. The video thing that you're suggesting, I think is nice because it gives them a frame of reference about what they're expected to do. And perhaps if I'm a, a scrub tech and I look at that video and I see, well, I don't know how to you know, set up that stapler, then it will also say, well, if you don't know how to do this, find one of your colleagues to help you. And I might go out and have someone, someone help me. I think it's actually a great idea. 
Yeah, I think both are really important. I've been in your operating room and I've seen you operate for days and I know that you know how to use every single piece of that equipment. You don't yep. dare um, I love bring it in until you're ready. I, I love yeah. the idea of the preparation ahead of time for your staff, but they're going to struggle. They're going to get nervous. Mm -hmm. Maybe the in, device sticks and there's a glitch. So my point is that preparation, wonderful, important, because it'll minimize the glitches. But right. they're going to be glitches, and you got to be the captain. you got to be ready to solve them all, in real time. Right. That patient's open. You're operating or minimally invasive or whatever it is. They're bleeding. Yeah. You know, so you have to be ready to jump in and know the technology yourself, which I know you know how to set up the robot. Yeah. Probably better than anybody right. in the room, and you should. Well, one thing I think that would be good to mention is the value of dry runs. So, you know, there's new technology like maybe a new, at one level, at one extreme, a new suture. Maybe there's not a lot of things that need to take place prior to that case. But if you're doing an entirely new operation or some dramatic change in the way a procedure is done, I think there's value in getting the team together and doing simulated, a simulated dry run to go over the choreography of what's going to happen to discuss expectations. Um, and then have those same individuals uh, do the procedure. And you can garner uh, institutional support for that, you know, when it's appropriate. I don't think, I think there are surgeons that will just show up in the operating room with a new widget and just go for it. And that, yeah. I think that's generally a mistake. Absolutely. Well, I think it's important. So in summary, we've talked about the importance of dry runs. We've talked about safety. We've talked about taking risks. We've talked about knowing the technology gaining all the stakeholders' interest and helping people understand expectations, and then getting admin support. I think also the other thing I would emphasize is patient safety. It's important to make sure that you do drills for what happens if things go wrong, and then maybe make videos to educate everyone and you educate yourself in the meantime. Absolutely. Thanks for your attention. We hope this was helpful to you, talking about how to thoughtfully bring new technology into the operating room at STS 2018. Have a great day.